Hi, I'm Lynn, the creator of Dearly Loved, a place for faith, family, fun, and a whole lot of Disney. Thanks for joining me today on this episode of Dearly Diary, where I want to talk to you about gadgets and gizmos aplenty. A big topic because I want to talk to you about the evolution of packing your perfect Disney backpack. The first step I want to speak to you about is, if you're anything like me, maybe you began planning this trip months in advance maybe even more than a year in advance. The first thing you want to do is pick a centralized location where you can start gathering all of those items that you want to take on your Disney trip. So you're out shopping, you're doing your daily life, and, and you'll have this place in mind in your home for when you come across different items that you want to purchase for your trip. This could be a laundry basket, It'll probably end up being 10 laundry baskets or covering the entire floor space of a guest room. Not to scare you off, but start with some place you can put purchases or things you know you're going to want to take on your Disney trip. That helps with the organization. One item I want to uh, give an example of is these storage uh contain these little zippy storage bags. They're more durable than Ziploc bags. You'll get them maybe with a pillowcase if you buy a pillowcase or my daughter has even had underwear come in them at places like Gymboree and maybe you would just toss these but why a centralized location is so important is because if you have that area you can just toss things into you'll be able to be thinking ahead oh this would be great for organizing my Disney backpack or just organizing your travel items in general. The second thing I want to talk to you about is um, really an evolution of sorts for your family. What type of a family are you? Are you a stroller family where you're going to need a lot more equipment and storage space? So with young children, you'll have your stroller and you'll have more storage space presumably, but you'll need that for items like diapers, your baby food, changes of clothes, when small children tend to have more accidents and be messier in general. Then you might evolve into the backpack family. So you have one backpack to carry all of your things for your family trip. And then you might even evolve further into just, it's a couple's trip, it's more adult, so you you just have your purse or you're one of those people that I don't think I'll ever evolve into that can go right through the express line at security because you don't have anything that you're carrying into the parks again don't think I'll be getting to that phase probably ever in my lifetime I'll always have my purse but so there's sort of this um, evolution as far as your storage needs depending on your family uh, so today I'm gonna tell you about my experience and that is we just got back from a recent Disney World trip with um, my family, my immediate family of just five, so two adults, my husband and myself, my three children at the time aged 12, 10, and 8. We were there for six nights and then we were joined by a lot more of my family. There were a total of 19 of us traveling for nine nights. And of those 19 people, nine of those were kids ranging in ages from, again, my son being the oldest, who was 12, all the way down to three-year-olds. So there's a lot, there was a wide variety of needs on that trip. Um, so Today I want to talk to you specifically about what my family used. You'll want to pick out your perfect backpack. If you have a stroller, again, your storage needs are probably a little bit different and you're going to uh, be needing to take more into the park. So this is the backpack my family picked out. It um, served us very well on our trip and it's actually a rolling backpack. See those wheels down there? They saw lots of miles. Um, a rolling backpack with a retractable handle. And if you'll notice here, um, my husband actually, we still have our straps tucked down into our backpack. And this is why I prefer a rolling backpack. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Disney has a policy both at Disneyland Resort and at Walt Disney World. And that is that you have to be able to push, not pull, you get the point. Push your stroller 
um, push everything in front of you. You can't pull items. So you can't bring in a wagon that you're pulling behind you. You can't bring in a rolling ice chest into the park. They, For safety reasons, they want everything to be able to push in front of you. So this is why I'm telling you this about the rolling backpack is um, it depends on your comfort level and what you want to get away with. Uh, when we were at Disney World, we were able to roll our backpack uh, pretty freely. Usually about once a day, we'd get um, told, you really want to pick that up and put that on your back because, our, you know, you can't roll that behind you. My husband was very responsible, would keep it close to his body at all times while rolling it. And we would just say thank you, and we'd go ahead and put the handle down and then pick it up by the strap and carry it, especially entry into the park. Um, through security when they're going to check your backpack, through the gates when you're um, entering the park, you'll want to carry it or have it on your back. But then, generally speaking, in Disney World, we got away with rolling it fairly liberally. And that was such a saver on our back. So we loved having the rolling back, back, backpack for that. You could also take turns, have your kids help you, depending on their ages, carry your backpack. But um, at the very least, having a rolling backpack is especially helpful if you're standing in lines um, for different attractions. You can always just put that on the ground next to you and it's not getting messy and just kind of scoot it along. So I really recommend a rolling backpack. You won't get away with rolling your backpack at Disneyland Resort in either of the parks simply because of the constraints on space there. It's just not as spread out as Disney World because of they're more landlocked. Uh, so that being said, depending on your comfort level, you'll need to choose your backpack or your real estate, basically. I'm not a huge fan of lockers, and this is why. One, they're stationary. Uh, it's kind of hard to predict throughout the day when you're going to need what. So if it's in one location in a locker in the parks, you might not it's just not as readily available as having a backpack or your stroller or your purse depending on what type of family you are. Also, I'm not a big fan of lockers because they're expensive. You're not going to get any more real estate even in the large lockers in the parks as you would out of a decent sized backpack. This really expands pretty well. Um, again, we used it for a two week long trip. It saw a lot of wear and tear. It was with us. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of lockers. They are expensive. The one place I would say lockers are beneficial is if you're at Walt Disney World and you're enjoying the water parks there, both Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. Um, you're not going to want to carry all of the items you're going to want to take with you as you go to the different attractions the water slides and such there per se and they also give you a refund of I believe five dollars uh, if you bring back your key so that considering that I would say the water parks those are the places where I would use lockers otherwise we really preferred having our items with us on our trip so now how do you pack your backpack you you have your centralized location, you've gathered all your stuff over the months or the years that you've been planning your Disney trip, and now you're getting it all together. You have your perfect backpack picked out or your stroller, uh, even your purse. What do you want to put in your backpack? Well, I'm going to assume that you're wearing a couple of key things, and that's your sunglasses and hats. So you and your family members are going to be I'm assuming that you're going to be wearing those items um, because those are important to have at the parks. But besides that, I also want to break it down between seasonal and situational items. So seasonally, that would be things like ponchos. Are you going during hurricane season to Florida and those ponchos are going to come in really handy? Are you going during a colder time of year to either Florida, California on your Disney cruise? Uh, so you'd, you'd need jackets, bulkier items. So those are seasonal um, things to consider about bringing those items into the park. Situational are things like, does your child have an allergy? Do you need to bring in medications, EpiPens, those sorts of items, an inhaler? So situational will be family dependent on what kind of items you'd need to bring into the parks in your backpack. Uh, another situational item would be um, 
what type of camera do you want to bring into the park? So that would depend on your storage needs, depending on what kind of a, uh, fo photos you want to take in the park. Do you want to bring in an external phone battery charger into the park? Um, especially at Walt Disney World now with the smartphones, very smartphone dependent on the technology there. So, so bringing in an external phone battery charger could be a really good idea. Um, another situational item would be your family's needs as far as autographs. So your autograph paraphernalia that you want to bring into the park for meeting characters. And are you a pin trading family? Are you a pressing penny sort of family? Those are more situational things to consider in what you want to bring in your Disney backpack. Another thing is, do you want to bring special books in uh, uh, for your backpack? Do you really like to find hidden Mickeys? Um, we had a book for our family about things uh, to do in lines. So we had that book in our backpack to entertain the kids while we were at the park. Um, now for the items that you want to make sure you pack in your Disney backpack. For sure pack sunscreen. We use just one of those uh, cooling or dry touch sprays worked great for our time in Florida which again was our most recent trip um, and don't forget chapstick uh, either that your family can share or that you can hand out to each of the kids and they have their own it's good to protect those lips we forget about them sometimes until you look over at your son and his lips are cracking and it's just not a pretty sight so Always remember sunscreen, your chapstick, um, any snack items. And this again is sort of situational depending on what your family's needs are. Um, we really wanted to experience all the snacks in the park. So we didn't pack a ton of food items in our backpack. But a couple of quick tips on if you are going to um, be considering your snacking options. Disney uh, Parks will give you free glasses of ice water. So if you want to consider buying powdered drink mixes or the liquid drop-in drink mixes um, so that you can spruce up those ice waters, that's a good idea to put in your backpacks. Another item would be if you have small children, a great tip I found is to bring in some disposable cup lids. So get those at your closest convenience store, put them in a sandwich bag, bring the cup lids in and scoot those onto a popsicle stick. So if you get one of those great Mickey ice cream bars, you have this drip catcher built in to uh, catch those nasty chocolate ice cream drips for little kids. I thought that was a great um, tip to pass on to you. Again, cup lids, just the disposable cup lids. You could probably ask for them at Disney too, but you can always pop into a convenience store to grab those. So let's dive into what I loved to take into my Disney backpack. I know this is, a, I'm probably wearing you guys out with the length of this here. Diaper wipes. Again, my kids were 12, 10, and 8, and these guys are priceless no matter what ages your kids are. I'll probably always carry these. They cover a multitude of sins. I carry them in my purse. These cute ones I got at the Dollar Tree. So again, having that centralized location, you're out shopping, you find something great, purchase it, toss it in there, forget about it till you're ready to pack. These, um, again, a Dollar Tree item, and they're perfect to take into the park and just you need a wipe, there you go. Um, cleans up so many messes and they're just great. Um, another item, uh, hand sanitizer, which we also got at the Dollar Tree. We actually had that just clipped to our backpack. Fun Disney hand sanitizer to clean up at the parks in a pinch. Medications. Um, these little storage containers I actually got, I think at Target. Um, medications and band-aids. Make sure you bring band-aids. Um, we also had triple antibiotic ointment just for any cut scrapes. This is invaluable. It's a blister stick, uh, blister block. I think it, it's a band-aid brand and you just rub it on like a deodorant into any hot spots on your feet, um, areas that are getting rubbed. Helps so much with all the walking that you're going to do. Uh, band-aid brand also sells special blister band-aids that I highly recommend you carry with you in your backpack. 
Don't forget medications, ibuprofen, Tylenol, of course, age appropriate. Um, kids tend to get achy. You'll tend to get achy after a long day in the park. Chafing uh, gel or powders, travel size to take in with you. Again, you're going to be doing a lot of walking, so you want to prepare ahead. Um, some other items. <clears throat> Again, these great zippy containers. More diaper wipes. I know I can't get away from them. Um, maybe cottonelle wipes to freshen up in the bathroom. Um, also, we you don't want to forget lens wipes, at the very least for your sunglasses, but we have uh, people that wear glasses in our family. So those are handy to wipe off spots and smudges during the day. Um, we also carried in with us, and the kids loved these, and here I'm reusing a park popcorn container to store these now that I'm at home. But the kids loved these fans. They, can, they have their own fan. You can fill them up with water and squirt yourself off on a hot day. They just take one AA battery, so pretty cost effective. And the kids loved having these fans to cool off with during the day. And they have the foam blades so they're not gonna hurt anybody. Um, and they clipped onto our backpack, which was really convenient too. Some fun items. Again, we had nine kids on our last trip. So during dinners, I wanted something to entertain the kids while we were at family meals. So I had this, again, cute container from Target um, that I stored all kinds of things. Probably the best times to find great small individual sized Disney products is during holidays like Halloween, um, maybe Valentine's Day. I got these great little play packs with crayons for the kids. Um, Instead of buying Disney suckers, I had these great princess fun dips, cars fun dips, um, little cars suckers. These were all in the party section, actually, of our local Walmart. It, there's just no end to the things you're going to find. One of the most fun things that the kids really enjoyed were these puzzles. I could get these out at a restaurant or while we were waiting for somebody to get off of a ride. And they're in tins, <clears throat> so you're not gonna have a crammed box in your backpack with you. They're in their own tins, and they were just these small puzzles. The kids loved working these um, at the parks. And I got these at the Dollar Tree, if you wanna be on the lookout for those. So that was my fun box, and I would just restock it every day and have something fun for the kids to do. Tried to plan ahead to be prepared for all of those, you know, moments when you have downtime and you're trying to entertain bored children. Uh, a couple of other things that we loved having in our backpack. I have two kids that are, well, I have three kids that are quirky, but I have two kids that are very sound sensitive. These were fantastic. On a previous trip to Disneyland at one time, I'd seen a little girl wearing a pair of pink ear protectors. And I thought, what a great idea for families with kids with special needs that just can't handle the busyness and craziness of the parks. So I have a couple of, uh, my two, two of my kids have sound sensitivity, especially to my little girl, especially to fireworks. Sometimes we would start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She'd be bugging me about when the fireworks were going to be that night because she didn't want to hear them. So for this trip, I went online, and it's actually gun protection. It's a Pelter brand, P-E-L-T-O-R. And um, I purchased these online, uh, and they're, they're, again, gun protection, ear protection. If you're at the shooting range, I guess, with your 8-year-old, they'd come in handy. Um, but they were perfect for my daughter at the parks for the fireworks and for my son and daughter on louder rides. So Dinosaur, for example, at Animal Kingdom at Disney World is a really loud ride. I would kind of wished I'd had ear protectors. So you just slip these on. We carried them on our backpack, kind of slung on our backpack. They're also perfect for an adult that just needs a timeout. It's like sensory deprivation. It's so wonderful. Not kidding. These were great. These were a great uh, thing that we had with us in the parks. My favorite, 
favorite thing that we had in our backpack though was this ridiculous looking item. Let me tell you about these. These are worth their weight in gold. This is a Frog Tog Chili Sport Towel. It's a cooling towel. And you're going to find these. You can even find them at Walmart in the sporting goods section or online. Um, just look up Frog Togs. And that's Frog with two G's and Togs with two G's. These are little miracles. It's like an evaporative cooler and a chamois, a car wash chamois had a baby. They are unbelievable. So you get them and the instructions say to wash them before you use them. So you wash them and you end up with this crusty, crackly, I don't even know what you'd call this. And you're like, yeah, right. This is going to do me any good. You don't want to put them in the dryer. You hang them to dry and you end up with this stiff, crunchy object. But all you do is you run it under water and you just wring it out. I'm doing over here. So I just ran this under water and you get this wonderful pliable non-dripping towel. Again, you just wring it out. I just folded mine in half. You put that around your neck and your body temperature just becomes so much cooler. It's great sun protection for your neck. I'm a humidity weenie, so it can be 60 degrees outside, and if there's humidity in the air, I'm sweating. My husband and I loved these. We swore by them. In fact, he washed his blue one with my pretty pink one, and it's more of a purpley color now, but that's okay still. Uh, and every time they would dry out, um, it just start, it stops being as effective. You just go into the nearest restroom and you just wet that again, wring it out. It's not going to drip on you. It doesn't even make your clothes wet. Um, and it's a great cooling option during the day at the parks. This was my favorite gadget or gizmo that we brought into the parks. Um, I hope that helps you. I know that was a lot of information. Again, start with a centralized location for all of your items for your Disney trip, not just your backpack, for packing for Disney in general. Make sure that you consider all of your family's needs and what you're going to need uh, for your storage on your trip. So is it a stroller? Is it a backpack? Is it both? And then go ahead and start packing that backpack, fill it up with great things for the park so that you can be prepared to have a wonderful time. The Bible doesn't have necessarily anything specific to say about backpacks, but uh, I did find in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25, um, it talks about how the ants are so wise, ants, little ants are so wise because they store up their um, food for the winter time in the summer. So the Bible does have a lot to say on preparedness. Uh, if you look at stories such as Joseph, um, all sorts of stories talk about being prepared uh, for famine, being prepared for what's to come. So you can always find things on being prepared in the Bible. Let me go ahead and read you this verse from Proverbs. Again, Proverbs 30, verse 25, and it talks about the wisdom of actually four different types of animals. But specifically the ants in being prepared, the ants are a people, not strong, yet they provide their food in the summer. So they plan ahead in the summer for what's to come in the winter. Just wanted to give you that little tidbit. Again, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.